Good Monday morning. Today we begin the book of James. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives generously without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. That person must not suppose that they will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he's lured and enticed by his own desires. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings death. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For anyone who hears the word and is not a doer, he's like the man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away and at once forget what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Wow. James packs a lot in this one chapter. And we'll run through it and just grab a couple of nuggets of truth. Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials. They are the challenges of life that grow your faith and develop perseverance. Joyce Meyer writes, I finally realized that God was not going to do things my way. He placed people and situations in my life that caused me to want to quit the whole process. And he didn't want an argument from me. He only wanted to hear, yes, Lord, your will be done. This may come as a shock, but all of life is a test. The good news is it's simply a pass-fail test. Finish the test and a passing grade yields eternal life. James goes on to talk about temptation. I love the quote that Nikki gave this morning. Opportunity only knocks once, but temptation leans on your doorbell. Temptation is when we feel like doing the wrong thing. But remember, feeling like doing the wrong thing is not doing the wrong thing. Doing the wrong thing is the wrong thing. Temptation isn't sin. But boy, howdy. It's hard not to go to that door and listen to that incessant ringing, isn't it? And of course, there's the subject of the tongue. Verse 26 says, Anyone who thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle that thing practices a worthless kind of religion. You know, instead of running off at the mouth, and I know whereof I speak, we should be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes it stings when God's word is applied to my wound, my wounded soul. But just like alcohol applied to a wound stings, remember, it prevents infection from setting in. Give it some time. Allow God's word to be applied regularly. Hear it, then do what it says. Lord, help me today to keep a tight rein on my tongue. Help me to listen, especially to listen to your word. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.